And then beyond that, it was written in the New York Times that I am pro-choice. That came out in December. Oh, you mean that three-word phrase buried in an article more than 1,200 words long in a newspaper that practically none of your audience would read? And then beyond that, it was written in the New York Times that I am pro-choice. That came out in December. So it's when yeah, well but nobody documented. reads them. It's when yeah, well but nobody reads them. I think you and I have very different versions of what well-documented means. They just aren't paying attention. Well, they audiences. weren't paying attention. They weren't watching my show because okay. I would say that I was socially moderate almost on a weekly basis on my show. So what? If you didn't say that socially moderate includes being pro-choice, how is anyone watching your show supposed to know that? They just aren't paying attention. Well, they audiences. weren't paying attention. They weren't watching my show because okay. I would say that I was socially moderate almost on a weekly basis on my show and then beyond that it was written in the new york times that i am pro-choice i notice you're careful to say that you called yourself socially moderate on your show but when it comes to the specific label of pro-choice you don't refer to an episode of your show you refer to a new york times article if you had directly stated you were pro-choice on the blaze why even mention the new york times why even bring them up unless they said something you didn't and then beyond that, it was written in the New York Times that I am pro-choice. That came out in December. Yes, it did. It came out December 4th of 2016. You know what came out 18 days later for those who were watching your show? This clip here. Think about it. The pro-choicers are supposed to be about rare and safe abortions. That's how they avoid sounding like straight-up baby killers by acknowledging abortion is not a positive thing and a difficult choice. Then we have Lena freaking Dunham out there wishing she could have murdered a fetus, wishing for the option to kill your child. Doesn't exactly say much about the cause, her character, or the pro-choice movement. And can we just acknowledge the fact that pro-choice still means a choice? It means there are some who are pro-life who choose not to make abortion choice. Sounds more like Lena is clamoring for anti-choice. And here I thought the loving left, the snowflake marchers, were all about peace and love and life. Except when it comes to the unborn, I suppose. Then it's a different story. You talked about pro-choicers as though you weren't one of them. It's almost like something a person would do if they wanted to distance themselves from that label. It's almost like something a pro-life person would do. Hmm. No, I'm pro-choice, and here's why. Pro-choicers. No, I'm pro-choice. No, I'm pro-choice. No, I'm pro-choice. Pro-choicers are supposed to be about rare and safe abortions. That's how they avoid sounding like straight-up baby killers by acknowledging abortion is not a positive thing and a difficult choice. This all sounds very pro-life, Tommy. You said pro-choicers are using shifty rhetoric to avoid sounding like baby killers. Check. Lena Dunham saying she wished to have an abortion is wishing to murder a fetus. Check. Okay. I would say that I was socially moderate almost on a weekly basis on my show. And then um, I didn't hear you say anything about being more socially moderate in this segment. Maybe you did in the full episode, but frankly, it doesn't matter. You said abortion is murder. Then we have Lena freaking Dunham out there wishing she could have murdered a fetus, murdered a fetus, murdered a fetus. Why would any semi-reasonable person watching your show hear that and still think you're pro-choice? Oh, I forgot. Because of a tiny three-word phrase buried in a 1,200-word article published by a newspaper they don't read. It's all their fault for not knowing better, not your fault for seeming to be one thing when in reality, you were something else. Let her talk. This woman, and I use the term loosely, single-handedly kills the legitimacy of the modern-day feminist movement every time she speaks. Yeah, let her talk. Let Lena Dunham undermine the difficult choice rhetoric. Only wannabe baby killers talk like that. When you say, oh, I just love abortion like Lena Dunham does, you're not acknowledging that there's a choice and a very difficult one. Wait, what did you say? You're not acknowledging that there's a choice and a very difficult one. Pro-choicers are supposed to be about rare and safe abortions. That's how they avoid sounding like straight up baby killers by acknowledging abortion is not a positive thing and a difficult choice. You're not acknowledging that there's a choice and a very difficult one. That's how they avoid sounding like straight up baby killers by acknowledging abortion is a difficult choice. You're not acknowledging that there's a choice and a very difficult one. I guess you're a wannabe baby killer, Tommy Laren. You're talking like one of them. You're the bad guy you just described. That or you don't believe what you said only six months ago. But I've been very forthright about that. I don't think so, Tommy Laren. You're acting like a person who says one thing to one group of people and then something else completely different to another group of people when she thinks she won't get caught. It well, did you know that his wife, you know, Beyonce? She's super slutty. 
Okay. Well, she, you can say it, not me, because the, oh, the beehive has hey. already come after me more than I can. <laughs> okay, hold on, on, beehive, hold on. The beehive has come after you more than you can something. Presumably more than you can handle. Tommy, you didn't shy away from kicking the beehive when you had your job at the Blaze. You said pro-choicers were wannabe baby killers. Now that you're on your own, though, you're outright declaring there are certain things you just won't say because you can't take the heat. And I'm really willing to risk everything for really what I believe in, so there's a degree of authenticity there. She's super slutty. <laughs> Okay. Well, she, you can say it, not me, because the, oh, the beehive has hey. already come after me more than I can. <laughs> okay, hold on, beehive. Yeah. Remember when I said you and I have different definitions of what well-documented means? I think you and I also have different definitions of authenticity. Uh, thanks so much to Tommy Loren. Very nice girl. Very nice. Very nice girl. No, Steven. She's nice to look at, but she's not a very nice girl. Unless you and I also have different definitions of words. So we, 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 we make sure we have the facts correct. <laughs> no, you didn't. Which is a shame because you brought up that same Lena Dunham rant that I did. Obviously, people had seen you on your show, like you just talked about with Lena Dunham, kind of railing against people who were uh, pro-choice activists. Which means you definitely had access to the facts, but you didn't make sure to get them straight. You let Tommy Laren distort them with impunity. But beyond that, we really are open to, to learning and hearing different views. And, I, and as far as authentic, we learn a lot in this show. Sure. Uh, when we have Tommy Loren on kind of talking about the situation, some of the controversy, and she's able to express her opinion on her own, you know, in her own words, I learn some things get to be clarified. Well, yeah, they did, but they were clarified by me, <laughs> not by you. If you really want to learn something, give Tommy Laren a call and challenge her to a no-holds-barred debate. I had a great time. I really did. The whole production was professional. Even if it was so far left, the stage nearly tipped into the ocean. I'm used to this. Nothing new. I enjoy walking into the lion's den and actually enjoyed this den far better than the den of other shows I've been on. If you think she's at all nice or truthful, then she should have no problem at all accepting your challenge. But I'm not going to hold my breath. No, sir. I'm not going to be able to answer questions just because my network... Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just talk about ISIS. <laughs> Sir, I'm not going to be able to answer questions. I apologize because... I, I ch uh, ch uh, get rid of that question. <laughs> Sir, I'm not, I'm not allowed to answer those questions, but what I apologize. What about ISIS? Sir, can, I, can I ask I'm you a just simple question? I'm sorry, Is Sir, ISIS really... uh, an imminent threat to America? I think any radical Islam is an imminent threat to America, and it needs to be dealt with decisively. Do they have uh, an army or an air force where they can... Uh... Sir, I have to go, sir. I apologize, but I...